Good morning. It is hump day, Wednesday, March 13th. Uh, a couple of news items. Uh, thank you to everybody who's reached out about TrendSpider. I will get back to you. Um, there were a couple of people that I got back to this morning. Uh, if you ordered TrendSpider through the links, uh, I will get back to you. Just so everyone is aware, um, TrendSpider is, let me see, where is it? Um, TrendSpider will go, yeah. Here we go. Trendspider, uh, they extended this, uh, I fit, but I think they upped the monthly price. Um, so if you want the yearly, it's still $595. I think that's the same as it was yesterday. It's 67% off. Uh, Trendspider, as we go through this, you'll see it's my four-hour algorithm on my watch list. Everything that I get, I send to you in a welcome letter. Uh, you use the link tree to sign up, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. It's down below slash daily stock pick. Is this top link, um, but the process is you go over here to the link tree, you sign up using that top link, uh, you sign up, and then you just email me. And the email is found here on link tree as well. It's uh, dailystockpick3 at gmail.com. And so once you email me, uh, I get back to you with a welcome letter. So let's look at the cues. Where did we, we were up yesterday. Yesterday was a rally. It was unheard of. Um, I don't understand what in the hell that the market was thinking. Uh, everybody that I read yesterday was like, um, hey, uh, inflation's up. Here's the market. Hold my beer. And it takes off. Makes no sense whatsoever. So what you want to do is you want to, uh, you know, find your opportunities. I put out a newsletter yesterday. Uh, finding opportunities. There's plenty of opportunities. The newsletter is absolutely 100% free. Uh, the weekend is paid. But I will have a uh, what I the uh, additional benefit of being a paid member is I have Zoom meetings and there is one today at twelve noon Eastern time. Uh, hop on Zoom; it's completely interactive. I, I let you open up your camera. I let you open up your uh, microphone. Uh, you can chat with me if you're a little bit shy. Whatever you want, that's it. Uh, I'm there for you. The other thing I want to let you know about is if you signed up for TrendSpider, Jason is having an office hour session today at 11 a.m. So you can hop on Jason's office hours at 11 a.m. and then hop on my Zoom meeting at 12. Simple as that. Uh, Jason is a master if you are new. I got a couple of messages from people that say they are overwhelmed uh, with TrendSpider. It, you got to break it up into chunks. You know, it, it's overwhelming. I will say uh, it is overwhelming. The benefit of signing up through me is you get your uh, uh, you get your uh, the, the the four hour algorithm. It's plug and play. You import it. So I send you a welcome letter with links, and, and you import it. You set up your uh, your design here. I do have a newsletter, by the way, that has uh, all of my setup in it, and I include it in the welcome letter. Uh, it is a guide. There's a free seven-day trial on this. So if you want to use my setup, you can go down here to the paid one. My setup on TrendSpider, it's a two-part series. Um, part one shows you all of the, uh, the the moving averages that I do and the MACD and, and RSI. Part two shows you everything that, that I use. You can set up your screen the way that I do. I explain. I send you videos as to why I've chosen these indicators, uh, moving averages and such. So it's a one and all package kind of thing. Uh, it is overwhelming. Take your time. It's not going to make sense. It's not. For somebody who hasn't done charting before, it's not something that's super, super simple. But uh, office hours today with Jason at 11, my live at 12. Uh, look at what happened four years ago. Four years ago, this was the market. Uh, yeah, who remembers this? Uh, my portfolio was down about 40 40%. 43%. This was where I started using the algorithm. This was, well, the idea came. I, I don't think I got TrendSpider until June or July of uh, 2020 uh, when we really wanted to do it. And then uh, uh, I don't think I've, we developed the algorithm until September, November, and, and we kind of customized it in, into 2021. So, yeah, I mean, this is what. Um, the TrendSpider is, a, a, it's not only going to allow you to, uh, to, to make money on the way up, 
But because you see button hooks, because you can see when the market turns down, it's going to save you on the way down. And that's the way you have to look at that expense for TrendSpider, the expense for um, uh, Seeking Alpha, the expense for any of this. You have to look at, okay, am I making more money as a whole? Am I growing my net worth? Because if that's the case, you're doing well. Uh, if you're not, you have to look at your system and look at things uh, a little differently. Uh, don't listen to me on Bitcoin, by the way. Uh, look, Listen to Tom Lee. Tom Lee has been more right than wrong. He's calling for it to go to $150,000. Uh, I think he said $100,000 by the end of the year. Mike Alfred says, we've just arrived at the beginning of a new bull market. I'm already seeing influencers shamelessly encouraging their followers to sell Bitcoin and sell Bitcoin proxies. This is abhorrent behavior that will cost their followers many tens of millions, uh, hundreds of millions of future value. Do not sell your Bitcoin. You know, part of it, people ask me about Mara. People ask me about uh, the Bitcoin ETFs. I, I have a, a watch list of Bitcoin ETFs. You can do those. You can track those in Seeking Alpha, uh, like I did a few days ago. Um, not all Bitcoin ETFs are tra- are trading the same. They're they're trading differently. So under, make sure you understand where yours is trading, how much market cap yours has, how much inflows yours has, how much Bitcoin they hold. Make sure you own that. And if you don't know all of that, just buy Bitcoin. And if you're just going to buy it, forget it. Do not buy an ETF. Trade your ETF. These are huge, huge costs that come along with owning these ETFs. Just own the Bitcoin. Your coins, uh, your your codes, your coins, whatever that saying is, make sure that you own the the the, the actual uh, the the security features of that. Um, Seeking Alpha is so good. Seeking Alpha Premium. You get $50 off Seeking Alpha Premium uh, if you use the link on my link tree. Uh, it is the second link right here. Uh, get Seeking Alpha for $50, $50 uh, off. This is part of their app. And, and, and it tells me this every morning. Here's uh, tech and communication stocks. Largest quant strong buys. M-A-N-H. Uh, market just opened up and, and, and we should be up. M-A-N-H. This is Manhattan Associates. Uh, look at this one. Uh, we don't have confirmation, but it's made its move higher. You know, your MACD has come down, but the stock price hasn't come down. Uh, you you made that huge move down here. You just traded sideways. This one's getting ready to take off again. Uh, I really like this. You know, we can look at Splunk. Zoom. Zoom has a cross up today or, or yesterday. I'm not sure which one it had. Let's see. In the algorithm. Uh, it is today. It's up there. Uh, Zoom in pre-market, you're at 69. You're down 0.09. This one, you're you're currently in this nice little run post earnings. Um, the 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 MACDs come down. Your RSI is at 60. It's a little overbought, but I do think you have probably 70, 74 in this one. So understand, this is how I use Seeking Alpha. I love the app. Sitting in bed and looking. I mean, guess SMCI Dell. App loving, uh, Rista Networks, um, Google, DocuSign. I, I, yeah, strong quant buys. I, I, I like the quant. Uh, Apple. Let's talk about Apple. I, I put out a newsletter yesterday that Apple was, I thought, one of the best um, uh, buys in the market. I think I bought it at 173.50. So I'm in the red right now. I'm not worried about it. I mean, this is a long term buy. I bought a ton, and when I t- say I bought a ton, it wasn't in my portfolio. It was in my parents' portfolio. Um, I bought a ton of Apple. I put it on a Savvy Trader. Um, if you're not following me on Savvy Trader, I've got two portfolios. I've got a core st- stock pick portfolio and a trading portfolio. Uh, the trading portfolio, I think it's number one in like the year-to-date, month-to-date, three-month or something. It's, it's quite crazy. Uh, it's SMCI, it's NVIDIA, it's it's stuff like that that I've been trading in and out of. Uh, the Daily Stock Pick Core Four, it's free to subscribe to. Uh, not only did I buy a ton of Apple yesterday, I bought a ton of XLK. And XLK, I added it to the core portfolio. It needs to be part of the core portfolio. I bought it around 211, 212, somewhere in that neighborhood. I'm buying at all-time highs. It makes no sense to buy at this port, uh, point in time, but... Long term, it's just long term. And if you have a better ETF that outperforms XLK in the tech in the large tech sector, let me know. 
because I'd like to know about it because right now XLK is the best one that I've found uh, with the fees associated with it. It's the best return that I could find. So, But I did buy Apple. I put put in more uh, XLK into my account. Um, Cisco. I wanted to bring up Cisco because I said on their last earnings – that I thought it was a $50 stock and it would cross 50. Well, it crossed 50 yesterday. Uh, you're kind of using that 200 day as a, uh, as a resistance factor. You kind of came down here. I said after earnings, uh, you know, buy it at 47. I, I didn't think it was th- this uh, slide down here was worth it. Algorithm got you in at 49, a bit late. Uh, you know, you kind of came down here to 48. And so, but it's a $50 stock. I said when it was under 50, I think it's a $50 stock. I still think it's a $50 stock. Uh, You're seeing a little resistance right there on the 200-day. I think you could get back up here to 53 or 54. Old tech is kind of going a little crazy. Um, 3M. 3M went nuts yesterday. And you know why? The CEO is leaving. So the douchebag that's run this company is leaving. Uh, That's news that was good to the market. 3M. I wouldn't buy 3M. I still think there's structural problems. It's up another 2%. The reason I wanted to bring it up, there's a gap here to 107. I don't know that you cover that gap. I don't know enough about this company to say, yes, it's getting back to 107. But I can tell you, it's probably going to get back there. I mean, 110 is kind of the, the resistance area up here. You could hit 110 and then bounce down. But that's a nice 10% move right there. So keep an eye on that one. Um, let's see. I switched my trend spider to uh, raindrop candles yesterday. And part of the reason I switched my trend spider to raindrop candles, if you have trend spider, you should try the raindrop candles. I completely, I, I, I tell the people this, this is volume weighted average price. I wrote a, um, a, uh, a newsletter uh, about volume weighted average price. Uh, buy the dip, finding opportunities in this market, trading with VBAP, volume weighted average price. And SMC as an example. Well, what do the raindrop candles tell you? Well, the first half of the period is on the left. It tells you the VWAP of the first half of the period. The second half of the period is on the right hand side, and it tells you that. Raindrop candles show you, they're kind of like candlesticks, but they show you the actual volume and, and the VWAP price. I love raindrop candles. I think they, they, they perform very well. Just be aware, my algorithm, if you change it to raindrop candles, the actual uh, ca- uh, calculation changes. So be aware of that. Keep an eye on that. Uh, just understand that I think it's like Hike and Ashy. Uh, when you change to Hike and Ashy candles, uh, the, the calculation changes. But I wanted to tell everybody that I did that. Eli Lilly flew yesterday. And part of it was announced this morning. <laughs> Maybe somebody knew about this, but Eli Lilly impact with Amazon to deliver Zepbound and other medicines. This is the weight loss drug. And Lilly was up like 2% yesterday. It's down 0.42%. Uh, you could have gotten this in the low 700s, down here 730. I still think you buy this at 750. I, I think we're seeing that turnover. Algorithm got you out with a 26% gain. I think you wait for some confirmation, but don't wait too long. You're putting in a volume shelf up here. So between 730 and 750, you can grab this one. This is Again, we're in a GLP-1 and an AI, um, AI, uh, AI market. So th- those are the two things that you really want to look at. Amazon was up 2% yesterday. This is $180 stock. You're at 176. Buy it. That's the all-time high at 188 right there. Um, you're going back there. So Costco was up 3%. Did you get Costco? It's down 0.68%. Did you get Costco down here at 718? Um, I didn't add to it. I do this podcast too much. I don't get the chance of buying in the morning, but it's at 731. I need to add this one to my uh, my portfolio. Uh, this was a great one. Meta. Uh, Meta was up uh, over 500, uh, up 3% yesterday. It's back under 500. Buy it under 500. Just buy it under 500. Netflix, they still have, um, they were up 3%. It's it's kind of just hovering between positive and negative right now. But Netflix yesterday, huge, you know, it's at 610. Just buy it. It's a seven dollars $800 stock. Just buy it. NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA was up 5%. And I want to discuss this one. Uh, Oracle. 
uh, and others. Oracle, Strength, Buoys, AI stocks ahead of NVIDIA GTC. There is a, a NVIDIA uh, uh, event happening. I think it's March. Let's see. Unveiling uh, is slated to occur on March 18th. Uh, Qualcomm added. In the, oh, that's the Qualcomm. NVIDIA is to host the GTC on March 18th. Yeah. March 18th, which is what, five days away? NVIDIA is probably going to get a pop. Buy it under 900. I'll probably be buying this one under 900 today. It's down a little bit today. Buy it under 900. Uh, I, I think that's, again, I think we're putting in. I know I've said, hey, there's this weakness here. The weakness, you know, we had bad inflation numbers yesterday. This thing barely moved. Barely moved. The algorithm still has you in at 515. Hasn't gotten you out. The algorithm's solid. You know, yes, the MACD's high. Just buy it. Uh, I, I, you know, one that is going nuts and, and, and should be watched. Um, and I don't think the algorithm has gotten you out on this one either during this run. Uh, it did. It got you out, out with an 89% gain. And then the next candle, it gets you right back in. Um, <laughs> this is NVDL. This is a two times long daily NVIDIA. This isn't one that you hold for a long time. Even, And I say that fully well knowing. That here in in January, you are up 163%. Okay, 163%. If we go to NVIDIA and we look at that same time frame, because the algorithm kind of got you in about the same time, and we look at the same time frame, 168 in that one is uh, 71% here. It's almost double. And I fully well know that you can make more by just sitting in this one and holding it. But do not. It moves too quickly. Uh, I would rather see you trade. The algorithm on this one makes you 493% buying and holding over 15 months. Makes you 853%. It is crazy. But I also have a 65-minute algorithm, which trades on the 8-day EMA. This one's a lot safer. Got you in at 4124 here. Go and trade this one at 4150 because you're still in this one. You have confirmation. The MACD is super low. The RSI is at 50. Go and trade it. But trade it on a shorter time frame. Do not trade this on a daily. Do not trade this on a weekly. Uh, NVDL is meant to trade on a short time frame. Um, but read this article about Oracle uh, and, and how it's buoyed. I think Oracle is still a buy as well. I think Oracle, even though it's up here at 128, I think. Uh, let's see. Has it pulled back? You, you do have to wait to buy Oracle because they just announced earnings. 126. It's kind of putting in that that film right there. If you can get it at 124, I think you're fine at 124. I think you're fine at 126, to be honest. Uh, they're gonna. They're just the beneficiaries. Dell is one that's gonna uh, be a good one for uh, AI as well. SMCI was up seven percent yesterday. Supermicro. This is a great article. Uh, was added as a new long idea by Hedgeye uh, Felix Wang due to the company's role in artificial intelligence revolution. Shares finished up more than 7%. Supermicro's biggest power up is its close collaboration with NVIDIA, specifically to build AI GPU-based servers. NVIDIA rose more than 7%. San Jose-based Supermicro was on a tear before the racket, rapid rise of AI. SMCI, you want to get, I want to get back into this one. It's down 1.78%. I want to get into it under $1,100. It's at 1140 I want to get in. I am not afraid to buy this at 1200 if we take off. So far, you still have confirmation. So far, it's still good. I sold at 1100 I want to get back in. Uh, this isn't something that's done. It's not something that's over. The other portion of the, uh, there's a couple of other AI moves that you can make in legacy tech, and that's Dell. Right now, Dell, you can see it after its earnings, it was up here at 125 It started to pull back. It's starting to fill this gap. You're in what? This was, let's see, February 29th. Uh, you're 13 days away from their earnings right now, and you haven't seen it move positive. So there's no reason to buy it right now. Wait until this one starts to move a little more positive. But I do think that Dell is, 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 is poised to do it. IBM is another. IBM is another one that you could buy. Uh, IBM, solid tech player. I mean, look at this one, 187, and you're at 196. You have confirmation. MACD isn't super stretched. The RSI isn't super out there. 
This is a solid, solid performer. I wouldn't suggest trading it. I think if you want IBM, you just buy it. There's news today that they're going to lay off a bunch of uh, sales staff. So that that's not a bad thing. Taiwan Semi, TSM in the core portfolio. This one's down 1.68%. You're seeing some choppiness, but what this tells you is it's got 155 in the tank. It's got 155 in the tank, so you're buying at 141. Not bad. Uh, you know, you're, you're bouncing up here against levels at about 141. It, it pierced this level, couldn't hold it. It's pulled back. You know, old support to old support turns into new resistance. The, the old resistance right here turns into new support. So your support's at 111. Simple as that. Um, w Walmart was up, way up yesterday. Walmart was up almost 2% yesterday. Walmart's down 0.61. Buy it under 60. I'm telling you, under 60 is a good buy on this one. Have patience. Uh, under 60 is a good one. You know what was way up yesterday? And I think it's up again today. S-O-U-N, Soundhound AI. Let's see. Is this one? This one's plus 6.3% today. Yeah. It's going. It's moving. Is it not all-time high? I don't know. Let's see. let's look at the weekly on this one. Um, no, it's not at all-time. All-time highs are up here. But, but it looks like about 10 uh, looks like, no, yeah, $10.80 on its initial public offering. So, yeah, yeah, seven thirty-eight. It's got confirmation. I, I mean, I, I don't know that I'm necessarily go, getting in there, but it's a good one. Uh, Anet is another one. This is Arista Networks. Um, I like this company. I really want to get into this. The it, algorithm has you out. Nice 1% gain, but it has you out. It's going to get you back in. At this one, 279, I'll probably add it to it. I just haven't. You guys will know when I add to stuff, but I, I always say I want to add to it, and I do. I really do. Another uh, X core uh, uh, daily stock pick core portfolio one that I've been adding to, Snowflake. Snowflake got you out uh, on this one. Hasn't gotten you back in in the algorithm. It's about to. It's putting in this floor at 162. When it's at 145, you better load up on this one, but at 162, I would start buying. I, I'm not saying they may not have more downside. Those Bollinger Bands are cinching up. They're getting ready to go. I'm not sure which direction. Uh, in fact, yesterday I posted this from TrendSpider. Snowflake has fallen over 30% in just two weeks. Is this another opportunity to catch a higher low on the weekly? Is this the higher low? Again, higher low back here. Higher low back here, higher low back here. You look at the weekly. This is the four hour right now. If we look at this weekly, you'll see that. I mean, yeah, look at that trading range that I've identified. Higher, again, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. Is this another one to find the higher low? Trading range is simple. You just got to buy it in between 125 and, and 200. Sell it when it gets to 200. Um, I like that one. I like that one a lot. Qualcomm, core portfolio stock. In focus is the company teases new Snapdragon uh, so, uh, flagship on social media. Qualcomm's in the core portfolio. This is a solid, solid chip stock. It's not NVIDIA. It's not AMD. But this is, this is a solid. Algorithm makes you 1% over two years. You know what buying and holding makes you? 20%. The algorithm has you in at 148. Boy, that was a great buy. This one, when the algorithm tells you it's only making 1% over two years, but the actual stock is making 20%, in my mind, I want to identify, is that company a good company? Because if the company is a good company, then I really want to look for good quality entry points. Now, 148, good quality entry point. Because you know why? If we go to this weekly and we look at this one, uh, 130, was the, uh, the the 200 day. And you're about to get a, uh, a, a, a golden cross up. You know, when was the last time you traded under the 200 day on the weekly? It was way back here in 2019. Uh, briefly during the uh, March 2020. You know, and then you had 2022, which brought you down completely too low. This is a, this is a great company, a great, great chip company. Um, I read a story by Herb uh, Greenberg yesterday. On Substack, I do subscribe to his newsletter. His newsletter is great. Uh, he put in this story. Uh, it is a if you've ever invested in Enphase, Sedge, or Tesla, go and tune into this. Uh, go and read this news article. I will include it in the newsletter. 
Uh, it is basically, it, it's about how solar storm intensifies. He's raising red flags about solar edge, about end phase, and about Tesla. But he says Tesla could disrupt this market, but make no mistake about it. This is not a bullish Tesla story. Uh, as a he, he basically says, and I can't find it written here right now, uh, Tesla's Powerwall 3 is uh, their newest battery. It is going to be a game changer. It's huge, uh, but it represents less than 1% of Tesla. So this is not a bullish Tesla story. This is just, hey, Solar Edge and Enphase, we may be seeing bad things in the future. That's what he's pointing out. That's what he's pointing. He's not pointing to, hey, oh my God, go run into Tesla. Do not run into Tesla. Tesla is still a tough, tough sell. Um, they've got some some major, major uh, some some issues. I just bought a Tesla. I think it's cheaper now. <laughs> a couple of weeks later, I think it's cheaper now. Do I care? No. I mean, I really don't. But, you know, again, that's the, the, the nudge on Tesla is they've been selling these cars at, at very large margins. They have pricing power. But as people get, you know, out of uh, EVs and more into hybrids, this one may get hurt. It may get hurt. Not, a, not, not everyone wants a Tesla. So understand that is not a bullish story for Tesla on solar. It is just an observation. Wells Fargo, in fact, cut Tesla to a sell. Uh, move their price target to 125 from 200, just based on valuation. You can read that article. It's at 174 now. 125 would push this one back uh, to God. I don't even know where. 125 is right here. Um, that would push it back to COVID. No, 2022. Where is it? 120. I mean, that would be where you would load up on this. Honestly, that that was a, a fair valuation in my mind. The volume shelf at 250 is still there. People are still holding on to this. Uh, if we pull this back to the all-time highs, uh, these are the all-time highs right here in November 2021. Uh, the valuation on this one, it's still there. The, the volume shelf at 265, it's still there. There's still people holding on at 265. Right now, you're starting to build this volume shelf out here at 160. There is no volume shelf down here. So as you go lower, look out below. There's nobody to sell. So your buyers are going to have to start coming in, but buyers aren't showing up. So be very, very careful of Tesla. Uh, super careful, in fact. Intel. I bought about $25,000 worth of Intel uh, before earnings. Bad call. Uh, Pentagon said they plan to uh, not pay $2.5 billion towards the Intel grant. Uh, that is not moving the stock a ton. And the reason it's not moving the stock a ton is down 1.67, 1%, 1%. Uh, it's down 1% today. You've got this range here. And, and, and the reason it's not moving the needle a ton is because it's assuming that the Chip Act is going to pick up that, that amount. That's all it is. Um, so there's that. Uh, let's look at earnings. Dollar Tree came in uh, with light earnings. Uh, they missed. They were down 10%. Let's see. They're down 13% now that the market opened. You can see that candle way down here. It's on the downside of it. Dollar Tree. I mean, it, it points out, I think people are shopping at Costco. I think people are shopping at Walmart. And I think people are shopping at Target. People aren't shopping at Dollar Tree right now. It's just not. There's two earnings later today. There's a uh, path, which is UiPath. We'll take a look at path real quick. I got a bunch of questions yesterday. Am I buying UiPath? Guys, when I buy, you'll know. And, and, and one thing that I don't want you to do is I don't want you to follow me. The only reason I present this podcast with stuff that I buy is for the reasons as I lay out the reasons. If you agree with the reasons, go. The reason I, I lay out if I buy earnings and stuff, I mean, I, I lay out that I bought DocuSign around um, uh, payment stuff. There are plenty of losers that I've had. I've had Sedge, you know, where, where I've lost. So I don't want you following me in. I do post my trades on Savvy Trader. The reason is because I have subscribers over there who want to follow. So I feel the need to do it. It makes me super uncomfortable. But, let, you know, if I buy, I will tell you. I don't want you to follow me in trades. So typically, I'll you know just kind of announce it after I buy it. I'm not not telling you before. 
Um, you know, I tell you when I want to buy something and because I think the story makes sense, then I make that determination. But it should be a personal decision. So the you know, point, part of the podcast is do your own research. AI path is in a, po- a positive trend. I mean, it, right now it is up 0.04%. So it's just kind of fluttery. Has positive, uh, you know, confirmation up there. There's a gap up here at 26. UI path, let's go over to Seeking Alpha and look at it. Uh, if we, well, let's go to Finviz first. I'll look at Finviz since Finviz is free for everybody to look at. Uh, they're not making money. They're losing 151 million. They have plenty of cash on hand. Do not worry about them with cash on hand. They got billions of dollars of cash on hand. Forward PE 47. It's expensive. Up year to date 1.13. Technology software stock. Uh, average target price is 24.76. They just got an initiation, no target price. Take that price target with a grain of salt uh, because, you know, look, everybody's selling. They're selling 22 and they're selling, you know, CFO, selling a bunch. He's putting a pool in his backyard. I mean, you know, see chief legal officer selling 256,000 to you and me. That's a ton of money to these guys. Eh, it's kind of buying a car. You know, I got to pay taxes. That That's my tax money right there. Um, he sold $2 million last year. I mean, you know, again, insider buying, but UI path on here. So a buy on wall street, the valuation is where it gets a D 23 out of a uh, 46 in information technology. If we go over to the wall street portion and we look at this, there's 23 analysts that cover it. 13 say hold. So, you know, again, take that price target at 25 with a grain of salt. The low is 17. Um, it hangs on to its price target pretty well. It doesn't seem to be crazy. I don't know. Am I buying it? Eh. I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I, I might regret that, but I don't think so. It, they're losing money. I want companies that make money. Sentinel one. Uh, this is one that's losing money as well. I think let's see. <clears throat> Sentinel one. Let's look at this one. This one's heading into earnings. Eh, it's okay. I mean, you know, I don't think that they're making money, but let's look uh, weekly. I mean, you don't even have a 200 day on this one. Uh, Sentinel One, we'll take a look at uh, Finviz to see. They're losing money. It's cybersecurity. So, you know, performance year to date 0.33. I don't have enough information um, about, you know, whether this one's going to surprise or not. This would be a total bet. I'm saying everyone's selling around 2709. You're telling you're you're just kind of there. This guy sold, you know, a couple million, a few million dollars at 30. I mean, you know, that that's a nice 10% move from where you are now. What do I see it as here? Let's see. Sentinel one. Uh you've got I've got a dog crying in him. I'm ignoring her. <laughs> uh let's see. Wall Street says buy. $29 price target. I think you take that price target with a grain of salt, but let me just check here the dates. March 12th, reiterated, $31 Needham. I mean, that's March 12th. That was yesterday. It got a price change from 28 to 31 from Needham. Average price target, 29. This one looks like it could, you know, again, the profitability is what kills it. If we go and look at the profitability, you can see the margin sucks. Uh, they're losing 68%. Um you know, it, it that the return on capital sucks. It's that they're not making money. And the valuation is crazy. Um, we can look at the PE over here. Forward PE is 436. 436. So, I mean, is it worth it? Ugh, I don't know. I mean, this, this doesn't make me feel as comfortable as Apple does. So, you know, as far as earnings go, maybe I do something. Tomorrow... We've got a couple of earnings too, and these I'm I'm much more able to uh, to talk about. Adobe, Adobe, I'm positive on. I mean, it's dipped here; it's under its 200 day. Adobe with its AI, um, you know, the, the only problem with Adobe is the valuation. This is tomorrow. It, it's gotten a nice bounce from 564 to 579. You're gonna use that 200 day as resistance. I can guarantee you that it's going to bounce. It bounced off there today. You're at 579. The 200 days at 587. If we go and we look at Adobe here, uh, they're making money. Their PE is 49. The forward PE is only 28. Year to date, it's down 2%. I mean, it, you know, again, this 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 is the leader in AI as far as I can tell from an image standpoint. 
uh, if we go and look at Adobe here, um, we can see it's a buy. The valuation is what you know what, what's killing it. Uh, if we go to Wall Street, the average price target is six forty five. You're trading at five seventy eight. If we look at some of the price targets here, um, downgrade January eighteenth four ninety nine. So is this in in down downward mode? Maybe. Uh, but the lowest is four sixty five. Again, you're trading at five seventy eight. 645 is the average. Look at the way it's traded to its price target. I mean, it's always been below it. It hasn't been above it. But that's a pretty big range of 11% right now. And and does their uh, you know, creative cloud, does this help the, this company? I don't know. I mean, this could be a good one. Uh, the other one that's reporting is one that I personally own, Ulta. Ulta Beauty. They got a shout out in uh, Target's. Uh, annual, or, or I'm sorry, their earnings that they were doing well. You're seeing a cross up, got you out with a 13% gain. I did not sell on that 13% gain, but the MACD's crossing up again. You're going to get in right before earnings tomorrow. It's going to get you in probably on this candle or the next, you know, the afternoon candle at around 560. Um, we can look at Ulta here. Uh, we'll look at, let me, before I get off the charts, I'm going to look at a weekly just to see where we are on the long-term time frame, you're seeing, right, <laughs> you got a double top here. But if you do the trend line, then you're down below the trend. This was a clear and, and present, like, just just buy it here at, at 383 in October 2023. October of last year, just go ahead and buy it at 380. You're at 560 right now. That's where you were at, in April when it was flying high. <clears throat> yes, Elf is a better buy. Uh, but... This trend, you're on the lower portion of this trend. I'm waiting to get to the higher portion, and I do think you get to the higher portion. The question is, do you double top out here? If you double top out here, that is the danger of this one. Uh, from an Ulta standpoint, the PE is 22. The forward PE is 20. This is way cheaper than Elf. Your average price target, 561. You're trading at 560. So, you know, February 15th, JP Morgan put it up to 600. That would be a nice, you know, almost 10%. I mean, we can look at it, Ulta, from a, a standpoint of um, uh, the quant and stuff. It's a hold from Wall Street analysts. Average price target, 555. It, you're right at your average price target. Most recent price target is up. How does this trade? Doesn't necessarily always trade above its price target. So that's the tough one of this one. Uh, its valuation is a D. Um, we can look at it uh, from an, uh, what is it, consumer discretionary standpoint, 22, sector median 14, forward 21, sector median 15. I mean, again, the valuation is a D. The profitability, A, look at those margins, 42%. You're making a lot. So I saw a, 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 a program on CNBC about theft. And the Ulta CEO was on there saying, yeah, we've been combating theft a lot of late. It's number six out of 28 in the uh, specialty stores. I mean, you know, Five Below, Signet Jewelers, Leslie's, ODEP, uh, Dick Sporting Goods, the top one. So I don't think I, you know, again, I'm invested in Ulta. I own Ulta. So uh, I'm not buying more. Uh, Shep, seems market is good with CPI. V-O-O-G. What's your take? This is the growth. Um, this is Vanguard growth, S&P 500 growth. I think you're fine. I mean, you know, if you, if you want to know VOOG, Shep, go get Seeking Alpha. You want to know VOOG? Just go over here and compare it to your favorite, uh, you know, the peers. Um, I think you're going to see, let's see, you're going to see other growth ones. Um, yeah, if we look at just total return on this, uh, total return. Over one year, VOOG up 41%. XLG, 46%. That's what I suggest. Uh, you look at three years, uh, VOOG, 32%. XLG, which I own, 46%. Five years, uh, VOOG, 108%. XLG, 120%. Uh, and, but, you know, XLG is 0.2% uh, expense, but this is the total return. So it's not being taken out of that. You know, it's, it's outperforming even when it's taken out of that. So again, I I, I, I like VOOG. I, I think you're fine. I bought XLK. 
I mean, if we if you want to, uh, let's edit symbols and we'll take one out and we'll put in XLK. We'll take out uh, this one and we'll just put in XLK. Um, the technology and we'll look at th these. Uh, we'll take that out, VOOG, and we'll look at XLK, XLK and XLG. Just look at those two. Uh, we'll do total return because again, you want to include dividends. Uh, that's kind of important. You look at this XLG, 46%, XLK, 54%. That's one year. Three year, uh, you're looking at XLG. You know, VOOG underperforms these two. I mean, it underperforms these two. So 10 year, you look at that. Yeah, it underperforms those two. So which one do you want? I, I, I think growth is fine. I think you're fine in growth. William, Gary, I have a system mostly based on free tools and some charting, and I am swing trader. My only reason for not getting TrendSpider is that my system works for now. Am I mistaken? No. No. If you have a system, William, and, and I... I I try not to push sales too much. Um, my, my goal to push sales are for those people that don't have a system. Um, if you have a free system that works for you and you're poor full and you're happy with your returns, do not change. Again, if you're beating the market and you have a system that works, do not change. The one, the when you want to change is, and I think when you want to look at TrendSpider or Seeking Alpha Premium or something of that sort, I think that's when you want to take your, your I wanted to take my uh, money management, my portfolio management to the next level. And I got scared with COVID. I had free tools up until COVID. And when COVID came and I lost 40%, I was 49 years old. Uh, it was different in 2007. I was 37 years old. I knew I had time in 2007. There weren't these tools in 2007. The market didn't react like it did in 2007. I knew I could buy. I could constantly just buy and hold a ton in 2007. Um, and I reorganized my portfolio around that that pullback. This time in 2020 scared the, the, the shit out of me. I mean, honestly, God, it scared the crap out of me. Um and so I wanted to change things. And so as I went through the summer of 2020, I decided, you know, I have a large enough portfolio. I am now retired because I retired in January of 2020. I think it's time that I start spending money in order to protect my stuff. And the only reason I started spending money was because I went to Fidelity and I went to other brokerage firms and I said, okay, what do you have as far as back testing a strategy? What do you have as far as technical trading tools? Uh, what do you have technically that I can look at? Because fundamentally, I was fairly sh uh, certain that I had enough tools fundamentally to value a stock. I didn't have enough tools technically to value a stock. That's where TrendSpider gets in. If you have enough tools that you're getting uh, results, don't feel like you have to buy it. Uh, you know, this this is just something that in my mind, it takes the training wheels off and, and, and you're able to look at stuff. I, I don't use bots and I'm very clear about this. TrendSpider, there are a lot of people who use trading bots once they are comfortable with a, a, a strategy. I am not. I am not. I just want to make sure that, that I have an additional reason to buy or sell. That has no emotion. You know, when you read an article, you get an emotion. When you look at a chart, it, it, there's no emotion. It can tell you exactly what you want to see. Um, you know, like this one, Vanguard Growth. Right here, am I buying Vanguard Growth? Well, it's on the positive side. Uh, it's got some positive candles going on right now. I don't mind buying it. I bought XLK yesterday. I don't mind buying it. Even though we're at all-time highs, I take emotion out of it. I don't mind buying it. When it breaks down, maybe I'm selling it. Or maybe I'm just adding to it, one or the other. But I think over the next year, I'll be more happy than I am upset at these buys. If I were to buy VOG right now at $300, am I upset a year from now if it's at $330? No. Am I upset if it's at $290? No. The VWAP right now is 283. So I, I don't I don't think that's crazy. But I, I don't mean to push you into buying stuff. You you do not. You know, wait, wait. Wait until the moment when you you have a large enough portfolio where you feel like, hey, a 40% pullback would hurt me. 
And, and if your system works for you and you, you feel comfortable managing your portfolio through a 40% pullback um, without any other any tools, don't feel like you need to buy it. And I'm not trying to scare you. That is not the security guy coming up to your house and saying, hey, we had some break-ins down the road. That is just somebody who's, who has you know felt comfortable with this. Uh, and, and my system works for me. I'm not trying to give you my system. I'm trying to help you. So if you have something that works, don't please don't feel the need to buy something. Um, you know, use my podcast. Use my podcast with your tools. That's the way, that's why I make all this stuff for free. I, I don't provide this stuff for free to try and lure you in to buy stuff. I provide this stuff for free so that you can work it into your system. There are plenty of people who use my podcast to trade uh, options. I do not trade options. You know, I, I get FOMO and I want to trade options, but I don't trade options. Uh, Raphael from um, from Spotify is Netflix Nvidia too overpriced? No, 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 it's not. Uh, let's go and look at Nvidia because what I want to do is I want to compare Nvidia. Uh, we're gonna go to Pierce and I'm gonna compare Nvidia to AMD. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're gonna compare it to Taiwan Semi Broadcom. That's probably a good list. Um, to be honest with you, that's probably a good list that it just pulled up. We're going to pull up total return because I do want to see because, you know, Qualcomm has some pretty good dividends. Uh, is it too overpriced? Look at this. Um, employees, I mean, it's it's got $2.6 trillion. It trounces the market cap of all these. Uh, if we go down here, the valuation, it's not crazy. Uh, I don't think it's crazy. If we look at uh, PE gap, 37 is that crazy uh, outpriced because AMD is 55? Is a uh, full year, uh, two year, 31? Is that crazy outpriced because uh, AMD is 36? Uh, is, is, is the trailing 12 months at 70 crazy? Probably. But forward, 40? Is that crazy? Look at AMD, 101. Look at uh, Broadcom, 59. Taiwan Semi is half that price at 22. But they've some significant political risk. Uh, Intel is is almost fifty percent higher than 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 forward. Uh, you know, the trailing twelve months. Look at that. Is it overpriced? I don't think so. But this is the caveat, Raphael. You have to understand this is based on their guidance. If their guidance is wrong, this stock is half its price. It, it, and and that what the, what's happening is you're coming up, uh, if we look at NVIDIA's chart and we just go on a monthly basis, what stocks do is they compare their earnings to the trailing tw uh, the, the last quarter. So this, this quarter that's coming up here in, in May of 2024, we're going to go back to May of 2023. Okay. It was this earnings. Look at that candle. That's a 26% weekly candle. That was the start of when NVIDIA started including AI and it really started pumping. They're going to have year over year in the next quarter comparisons. That's going to be tough when they had a, uh, you know, a hundred percent growth last year. Will they have 100% growth this year? Maybe they only grow at 25% because that is a significant growth to overcome the percentage. People will be looking at the percentage. So understand, I don't think that it's overpriced. I just think the comps are going to start hurting this one. The value of this one is there. More for you. Uh, wants me to look at Carvana from Spotify. Carvana. I had such a good experience at Carvana. It's hard for me to talk down about Carvana, but I think they overpaid me for my car. I hope that they get $28,000 for my car. I don't know that they're going to get $28,000, but they gave me $22,000 for my car. Question, just no questions whatsoever at pickup. They drove it around. They loved it. They saw the ceramic coating. They saw how I took care of it. Uh, I do think that I probably could have sold that car for $25,000, but $22,000 to Carvana, I'm happy to give it to them for $22,000. Where's this stock going? I don't know. They're still losing money. Um, this could be a short squeeze. They have a significant short flow of 34% shorted. Uh, the PE is 105, 105. They don't give forward guidance. 
They're up 48% year to date. They are up 952% in one year. In one year. They've given good guidance. Uh, I, I don't know. I had such a good experience. I want to believe in this company. I want to believe that these guys are going to make this work. I just don't know. The cost factor is is just crazy. Their growth, it's an F. The valuation, C minus. Everything as it is a hold. I just don't know. On for on for you, more for you. You can take a chance. I don't. I think there's better options in the market. That doesn't mean that this doesn't all of a sudden go. Uh, you know, look at that. Nine hundred and sixty-six percent. You're only up forty-two percent. It, look at how low it is compared to its 2021 highs at 360. So I don't want to say, oh my God, don't you. I had such a good experience. I want to believe in this, but the valuation is crazy. That's it. Scans. We had Walmart uh, cross up. I, I say get this under 60. Uh, Walmart, it's at 61. It's down 0.13. The market's coming back. Uh, it has positive momentum. But this is just another, I mean, if you bought this at 50 and now you're at 61, kudos to you. Uh, I own this one. I, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, Microsoft had a cross up. Uh, I think we're still in a current run. Uh, let's see. Did Microsoft get you in? Yeah, 413. 413 yesterday. So it's trading at 413 today. Uh, one from our watch list that that Brad um, uh, Freeman really likes is Duolingo. Duolingo, it, it's just expensive. Understand, it's expensive. If you bought at 184 back here before earnings, kudos to you. Started trading down on this gap that it created. If you got it at 202, kudos to you. Uh, you've got strength. Again, This is you're, you're in at 184. The MACD's kind of come down. It's expensive. Uh, an alpha pick that came up was MHO. If you guys want to get into some of the alpha picks, MHO. Uh, this one, kind of capitulating here in, in a decent range. I'd say from here, you know, you, you're talking down there to up here. You're in the middle of this range. Um, your 50 days movement starting to move positive. Your 200 days still moving positive. This is just another blip on uh, 119. But you have, you know, 140 in this stock uh, back here in December 2023. It's an alpha pick. If you want to get in on alpha picks, by the way, uh, Alpha Picks is right here. You can it, it's on this, the the link tree. It's the third one down here. You want to beat the S and P? This is just two stocks every month that they give you solid analysis. They tell you when to shift to sell, uh, when the new picks are added. It, it's one of those services. What the reason why I like it? Look at the performance. I mean, the performance is unbelievable. And I do think the the addition of their analysis. I think it's every two weeks they give you an analysis uh, uh, a seminar and they just go over everything. So I, I like that one. I, I like this uh, MHO. I, I've wanted to add this one. This is one of their big winners. Uh, Zoom, we went over Zoom, has a, a cross up. I will be on Zoom at 12 o'clock today. So that's a good one. Uh, Visa, J&J, IBM, Align, Veridesk, uh, Intuit, uh, PayX, Starbucks, Marriott. Covered call ETFs. We did have a couple of sectors that I want to call out. Uh, spider sectors. XLV had a cross up. This is the uh, healthcare. Uh, this is on a run. I mean, it, it, you know, you bought in here at 140. This is just another entry point at 147. From a long term standpoint, uh, with healthcare, you're at all time highs. I mean, th this is a tough one to. I'm not a big believer in healthcare. Look at how far that's run so fast. I mean, in a sector, you bounced right off that 200 day. And in four months, you're up 20%. 20% should be in a sector what you're up in like two years. But no, you're up four months. So it's hard for me to, to, to put that one in. Uh, the other one that, that is in there is one that I went over, uh, XLG. XLG has a cross up. This is the S and P 50. So it's not the S and P 500. This is the S and P 50. It, it's a point to me that large caps continue, continue to go, go. Uh, they're just, they're continuing to run. So, um, I'm gonna, let's see. Uh, I want to remove that, remove this segment annotation. We're going to remove that and we're going to put this in. We're going to say from that $37 mark, 
This is up 10% in 63 days. So two months, 10%. I mean, that, you know, you look at this one from a uh, all-time high, and yeah, you're at an all-time high. But this is the S&P 50. I, I, I think these continue to move. So, uh, again, if you have any questions, you can hit me up. Trend Spider, their sale, it looks like they extended it for another four days. I'd get into this. Again, if you're trading, um, you've seen my, my algorithm perform over the past couple of days. I've shown you enough charts. I'll show you more uh, in the newsletter. The newsletter for all the newsletter subscribers, if you want to join, the Zoom meeting is down here, bottom left. Uh, it is for paid newsletter subscribers. So if you want to pay, I think 20 bucks, I'm going to up the price. After today, I'm going to up the price because I've done two of these Zooms in a week. And, and it is a, a pain in the ass for me to get on Zoom, to be honest with you. But I like interacting with you guys. It's not that I don't like it. It's just it interrupts my day, especially when I do these podcasts. Because right now, I got to run. I got to do the, the, the newsletter. I got to put everything out before I do that Zoom. So if you have any questions, hit me up. Okay, take care. Bye. Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. Daily stock day trading podcast in my ears. Guiding me through my hopes and fears. Tune in daily. Don't miss a single show. Sign up for the newsletter. Let us help you grow. Taking risks, making moves, seeking success. Together we'll conquer no room for any less. Every morning I wake up to the sound. The trading bell, my heart starts to pound. Daily stock pick trading podcast in my ears, guiding me through my hopes and fears.